Hello, hello. I just finished recording a lesson for my students. I'm teaching like a science class this year, a biology class, but I figured, you know, why not make this available? Um, I might even be able to leave the article that we're reading. If I can, I will put it in the description and I'll also put in the description some notes I took. So it's all about science. So if you are learning English and you are curious about how we talk about things in English when it comes to science, you might like this video. Hey, oh, don't forget, subscribe, like, share, all that stuff. Hope you find it useful. What's going on everyone? Biology class, difficult article we're reading. So what I thought was, I wanted to record a video so that you could watch it at least once but then if you watch it a couple times, you will understand some of these very difficult terms even better. So what I did was I took like maybe a half of the really hard terms from that article, put them here with pictures and also example sentences. So let's get right into it. One of the first very difficult verbs you will come to is dangling. Dangling, and I'm not sure how many people know what dangling means? But I got a definition right there below. Dangling means something is hanging loosely or not connected to anything. So if you take a look at that picture right there, <clears throat> excuse me, um, we don't even have these types of phones anymore. You know, most of us use cell phones, but hopefully you can recognize in that picture that was a telephone that people used a long time ago. Well, that telephone is dangling. It's just kind of hanging there. And that person, they are dangling their feet off what looks like a pier at the ocean. Dangling. I have a couple sentences for you. Her earrings dangled from her ears. So sometimes people wear earrings and they kind of can kind of swing when they walk. That's dangling. Here's another one. I dangled my feet off the bed. Hopefully that makes sense. Hmm. What could we have dangling in the, uh... oh, we have a phone kind of like that in the classroom right there, that red phone. So it's, it's not a cell phone, it's a corded phone. So hopefully that makes some sense. The next one, silk. We talked about spider webs being made from silk. Here's a definition of what silk means. Silk is a soft and shiny material made by special worms called silkworms. So if anybody is wearing a silk shirt or maybe sleeping on silk sheets, those would be made from silkworms. But in our article, it's probably not real silk. It's a lot like silk that those spiders are flinging or using to make their webs. <clears throat> if you fling something, it's kind of like you throw it really quickly. So it's often used to make pretty clothes and other things. Clothes, not easy to say, right? It's almost like a Z at the end there. Clothes, clothes. Let's talk about a sentence. The beautiful dress was made from silk and it felt as smooth as a cloud. And I know some people I've seen are reading along as I read it. That's a great way to, to work on your pronunciation, shadowing. So I'll read that sentence one more time because there are some difficult words in there, some S sounds. The beautiful dress was made from silk and it felt as smooth as a cloud. Silk. Yeah, silk is nice and soft. It's a little expensive though. So I don't own any silk clothing. I don't own any silk bed sheets. The next one, scatter. It's a verb and it means like to spread out. That's an English phrasal verb. But in the picture, you can see those are puzzle pieces and those are scattered. They're not in one big clump, they're scattered. So let's take a look at the definition. Scattered means to spread things around in different directions. like. When you drop papers on the floor and they fly all over the place. So if you had like a nice pile of papers, and maybe you trip, 
or you just accidentally drop them, they probably won't fall down altogether. They will scatter and then you'll have to pick them all up from the floor. Scatter. Oh, how about this in school? Sometimes, you know, when everybody, I saw this a couple of days ago, but there were a group of people just kind of hanging out at the bathroom. And then some teacher came by and said, hey, you all should go to class. And then everybody scattered to their classes in different directions. Hopefully that helps. Hatch, <clears throat> excuse me, hatch. My voice isn't that good from teaching all day. Hatch. So in our article, it was used as a verb, something you do. And if you look at that picture, it looks like uh, maybe a little baby chick has just hatched from its egg. Hatched. Let's talk about what hatch means. Hatch. Hatch means to open or break through something. Like when a baby bird comes out of its egg. So we, we say that the egg has hatched. The egg has hatched. Look at this one right here. Sentence for you. The baby chicks hatched from their eggs and now they are tiny birds. Hmm. Yep. No longer in the egg anymore. They've hatched and now they're small birds. Beagle. In the picture, there's definitely a dog. But that breed of dog, that type of dog, that breed of dog is a beagle. And they're used for hunting. But in our article, there are no beagles. There are no dogs that I know of in the article we're reading. But the ship Darwin sailed to the, to the Galapagos Islands. On was called the HMS Beagle. I don't know if I read that great. I will read it again. The ship Darwin sailed to the Galapagos Islands on was called the HMS Beagle. Beagle. It's kind of a famous ship. Darwin, we'll talk about him more in the next video. But here's a sentence using beagle. A beagle is a type of dog shown in that photo right there. That's a beagle. The next word is specimen. This is definitely a word used in science quite a bit. Uh, quite a bit specimen. Let's take a look at the uh, definition. A specimen is an example of a single thing that represents a larger group of things. And if you saw in the video, that museum had lots of specimens. I think it had specimens of beetles, specimens of butterflies. Well, let me get rid of this and make this a little bigger. And we can talk about these specimens. Like the one on the left in that bottle, I can't tell what that is. Maybe it's a scorpion because of the tail. But there's definitely a scorpion on the right side, that big one. I don't know if you can see me pointing to it, but there is a specimen on the right side. Lots of little bugs like a spider, probably some beetles. And in the middle, this is kind of gross. But I would say that is a specimen of, of, of like urine, of like pee. That's what it looks like to me. And um, if you have that, you might also hear it called a sample. So the doctor might want a urine sample. So you might hear sample with that urine, but uh, a specimen. Let's look at the definition one more time. It's an example of a single thing that represents a larger group or type of things. So Darwin was collecting specimens on the Galapagos Islands so he could bring it back to England with him and study them more. So he probably took one or two specimens of each creature, of each bug, to bring back. And unfortunately, you know, if it's a specimen used for science, it's, it's probably dead. Oh, some of those bugs, though. I don't mind if they're dead, but electrostatic, electrostatic. That means related to the way electric charges attract 
or repel each other. We're going to talk more about attract and repel in just a minute. But it looks like from both of those pictures, there is a lot of electrostatic in the air or electrostatic electricity in the air. So you can see that woman, I think she's a woman, her hair is standing up. That's what we would use there. Her hair is standing up. And this looks like um, maybe they rubbed that balloon on that girl's hair and now it's kind of floating in the air, which is how some scientists think that spiders are able to fly. They will use the electrostatic in the air and kind of let it let the spider repel and kind of balloon. That's the verb they used, balloon. Next one is particles. I have a sentence here for or a definition here for you. Particles are tiny, very small pieces or bits of something. Particles. Very small. Like, they might not be so small that you need a, a microscope to see them. We'll talk about even smaller things. But particles, it's like really small things. It could be dust. Do you know what dust is? Ugh. It's mostly made up of human skin, I think, but... If um, nobody is living in a house for a while, there'll be like a little layer of kind of like dirt, really small dirt on all of the stuff. We call that dust. Call that dust. So dust particles. I have a sentence for you using dust as particles. The dust in the sunlight looked like tiny particles floating in the air. So most of the time you can see particles. They're very small things, but you can see them. The next one, you can't. I think the next one, yeah, atoms. Atoms, another scientific term, atoms. These things are so small, you can't see them. Atoms are the tiniest building blocks of matter. We will talk more about matter, but matter can come in different forms. It might be a solid like our phone, you can touch it, you can feel it, it's solid. It might be, have some water in this cup. It might be liquid, like water would be a liquid, or it could be a gas. And we can't see oxygen in the air, but we do breathe in oxygen, and it is made of atoms, but they're so small we can't see. But these here, if you had a microscope, like maybe you could use it to see the atoms of my phone, but they're so small you can't see them. You need a microscope. Hope that helps. And we got two more right here. Attract and repel. We'll talk about these two at the same time. Now we've been talking about magnets or magnetic forces and magnets can do one of two things. They can either attract or they can repel. And in that picture, it looks like that, I'll get rid of this here. It looks like those, and we might even call those like magnetic particles. They might be a little too big to be called particles, but, but, but it's close. So that magnet is picking up those little pieces of magnet and they are being attracted. So attract just simply means that two or more things move closer together. And you might also hear this with people. Like if you are attracted to a person, that means you think they look pretty good. They might be a pretty good looking. You might be attracted to them. You might say, whoa. I don't know if you want to say it out loud, but whoa. That girl's attractive. That guy is attractive. So magnets can attract when they come together. And we, we probably should talk about when that happens, okay? Magnets that have opposite charges, like negative charge and a positive charge, they will attract. So if magnets have opposite um, charges, they will attract. Opposites attract. The opposite is true. Repel, that means to go away from each other. 
So you could be repulsed. We might use that when you're talking about people. If you don't like them or you don't like the looks of something, you could be repulsed. And it comes from repel. It's like, Ew, I don't like that. But if you look in the picture there, over there, it looks like those two magnets are repelling each other. Like that person can't quite squeeze their fingers together because those magnets are opposite charges. Remember, I'm sorry, the same charge, the same charge. Opposites attract the same charges, they will repel. So repel means to go in the opposite direction. Magnets that have the same charge will repel. Oh my gosh, I got a typo in there. Let me fix it. Will repel. Okay, that should be good now. Better, I think. Magnets that have the same charge will repel. Like two positive charges or two negative charges. And some scientists think that the spiders will use, you know, different charges to repel and be able to kind of float. All right, that's it. That is, what, 15 minutes? It's a long time. It's a lot of new words. Hopefully your brain is like, oh my gosh, that's so much. But remember, the reason I record these is you can watch it a couple times if you want to learn the material even better. All right, that's it for today. Thank you.